A few weeks ago, I published a video about why I stopped drinking coffee for a week. The main reason was to just resensitize my body against caffeine. In this video, I'm gonna give you 8 signs you should stop drinking coffee for at least a time being. If you can recognize more than 2 symptoms, then I advise you to take a break from caffeine and allow yourself to go back to normal. This is liquid crack. Number 1. Can't wake up without coffee. How many people you know who wake up like they've been hit with a club? They're groggy, exhausted and just unpleasant. Only after getting their first sip of coffee do they become normal and awake. If you feel tired after having slept for an entire night, then it's a sign that your sleep quality isn't that good. Drinking coffee on top of that deals with the symptoms, but it doesn't fix the underlying cause of why you feel exhausted. You shouldn't need caffeine to wake up because your body naturally produces more cortisol, the stress hormone in the morning, which should give you energy and alertness. Unfortunately, if your circadian rhythms are out of sync, or if you sleep bad, then this wouldn't happen and you just feel dead. Instead of depending on coffee to wake you up, you should fix your circadian rhythms by getting morning sunlight onto your face and skin for at least 10 to 15 minutes. This will kickstart the circadian rhythms and tells the body that it's daytime. Going to bed consistently at the same time and improving sleep quality should also deal with this. Number 2. You drink more than 2 cups of coffee a day. Coffee has been shown to have quite a lot of health benefits, such as improved cognition, reduced blood sugar, reduced diabetes, and increased performance. However, all of the studies are done in moderate consumption of coffee. Too much caffeine has quite a few negative side effects like hypertension, stress, arrhythmia, dehydration, anxiety, and even death. If you have any of these symptoms, then it's a sign to cut down your consumption and take a break. A lot of people, especially office workers, tend to drink coffee throughout the day. Some may end up getting 6 to 8 cups if they start off really early. That's definitely too much and I think that for moderate consumption you would have to stick to like 2 to 3 cups of maximum. Instead of giving yourself a coffee fix several times throughout the day, you should take movement and outdoor breaks. Get exposed to daylight and move around to get the blood flowing. Number 3. You wake up throughout the night. Caffeine can definitely interrupt sleep quality and cause restlessness at night. The half-life of caffeine is about 5 to 6 hours, which means that if you drink coffee at 12 p.m., then 50% of it will still be in your system at 6 p.m. That's why you should stop your consumption before 2 p.m. if you're planning to be in bed before midnight. Waking up once or twice to go to the bathroom is fine as long as you're not doing it chronically. Waking up several times throughout the night can also be a stress problem. Instead of letting yourself fall deeper into deep sleep, your brain will wake you up whenever you tip your toes in it because it thinks you're in danger and going into deep sleep makes you more vulnerable. It's a bomb! Number 4. You have high blood pressure. Caffeine works by increasing stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. They increase your metabolic rate, promote fat oxidation, give you energy and speed up heart rate. It also raises blood pressure and can cause problems for some people. However, research has found that moderate coffee consumption is not associated with higher blood pressure or hypertension. Moderation is deemed to be safe even in patients of cardiovascular disease and heart disease, although caution is needed. It's probably because regularly drinking coffee makes your body adapt to it, thus it affects you less. Maybe that's a reason to take a break every once in a while, but not for too long because you'd actually reduce your caffeine tolerance too much. Coffee will be harmful to your blood pressure and heart health if you combine it with too much stress, sleep deprivation, high intensity exercise and just nervousness. If you're the kind of person who's already hyperactive, then you should probably be consuming less caffeine already. Number 5. You're dragging your feet. Caffeine travels to the brain and blocks a neurotransmitter called adenosine, which regulates wakefulness and sleep drive. However, it only masks the sleepiness because your body hasn't really fixed the rise of sleep drive. You're just blocking the accumulation of adenosine that would otherwise tell you that you're tired. You feel as if you're not tired, whereas in reality you are. If you're dragging your feet throughout the day and have no energy, then it's a sign you either didn't get enough necessary sleep or are dependent on caffeine to keep you alert. Number 6. You have digestive problems. Coffee is an acidic beverage that increases the production of hydrochloric acid or HCL. HCL is used to break down food, especially protein. Unfortunately, doing this too frequently can result in a negative feedback loop and you'll start producing less HCL in response to actual meals. If you experience bloating after eating, get stomach pain when drinking coffee, heartburn, have ulcers or IBS, that it might be caused partially by coffee. Taking digestive enzymes will also help to deal with any negative side effects on digestion. More often than not, people get bloated or constipated because of not producing enough HCL and being deficient in enzymes. 
That's why I recommend Bio-Optimizer's Messimes and HGL Breakthrough. Number 7. Eye Twitching Excessive caffeine can cause eye twitching or myokymia. Both the upper and lower eyelid can start to twitch and it feels like it's about to explode. Caffeine increases noradrenaline, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter that increases the self-sustained firing of neurons. This is partially why coffee improves exercise performance, but it can also create random twitching. Myokymia often happens when you combine coffee with too much stress or sleep deprivation. It usually lasts for a few minutes, but the symptoms will stay around as long as you're still stressed out. That's why reducing your caffeine in response to the stress is a smart idea. I don't want my coffee shaking! Number 8. You don't feel the effects anymore. Like I said in the beginning, coffee in moderation is perfectly fine and it's actually healthy. If you can't feel the effects of moderate coffee consumption anymore and need to either up the dose or get stronger brews, then it's a sign your body is adapting to the caffeine. It's a normal physiological phenomenon and the body adapts to almost anything. To not become dependent on multiple cups of coffee a day, you should pay attention to how much caffeine are you consuming and whether or not it's still working. An average cup of coffee has about 100 mg of caffeine and the upper limit according to the FDA is 400 mg per day. Energy drinks are much more dangerous than coffee as an 8 ounce beverage can have 50 to 250 mg of caffeine. It's also more addictive because of the sugar and artificial sweeteners. I personally stick to just like 1 to 2 cups of coffee a day and whenever I notice that 2 cups doesn't work for me anymore then instead of hopping the dose I actually take a break and allow my body to resensitize itself. So that's the smarter way of going about it. Instead of going all in more then you should actually take a step back and allow yourself to recover. If you want to check out my other video about how to drink coffee strategically at the right time and in the right dose, then check it out. If you need help with your sleep and circadian rhythms, then check out my total sleep optimization video course. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered. It's a bomb!